the most beautiful gorgeous naked is she Linda Lusardi are you naked I'm, yeah it looks like I'm naked if I sit like that doesn't it no I have got a it nice does. <laughs> oh. oh that's very pretty darling you thank always you look for, lovely thank you for coming back and being with us because I've missed you so much so oh, much I'm glad you've missed me because I've missed you too oh, oh I know. Oh, but then instead, in fact, we've, you know, Natalie's been here, so she, you know, you can't miss anyone when Natalie's around because she might look little and demure, but inside there, there is a. She's a fireball. She's a fireball. She's a fireball. I've yeah. seen her on stage. She's amazing. And she's got four, <laughs> oh. that lady. Yes, <laughs> she really I, has. I have I balls, think you're so just you know higher that. up. Yeah, your balls. Know. Everyone can see your balls. Oh, Thank don't you. say balls. Don't say balls. My daughter's beautiful dog, Woody, has gone in for his op today. Oh. And I, I had to say, he came round for dinner last night, Woody, and I had to say goodbye to his little cojones. I had to say, I'm so, oh. I never see them again. So he's having his oh, role. Is it, is it uh, just because he's a puppy or? Is yes, it and because oh. he's humping everything in sight. Oh, so yeah, they're having him good. done. Yeah, so oh, it would have been great for it. in our lives, wouldn't it? To any man that we went out with who was humping oh, yeah. the other side, that we could have just taken his balls off as well. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had, actually, <laughs> metaphorically, of course. <laughs> now, yeah. talking about balls, Dee, we have got a ballsy lady who's coming on next. Oh, we? God, yeah, we really have. She's written a fantastic book, but not just that. Her whole story is just fascinating and incredible. And she'll tell you all about it, but it's the amazing, amazing Eliza Harrison. Hi. Hi, Hi Eliza. <laughs> thank you so much for asking me on the show. Well, thank oh, you for coming on. Nice. Your story is so interesting. Yeah, it's quite a story. It's oh, we're dying story. to hear. Tell us all. <laughs> your book. Your book. Very, very fascinating. And your life. Incredibly Absolutely. fascinating, Eliza. Um, been... So much everyone can relate to in different ways, even, you know, just one thing. I just think it's amazing. And you're a real survivor and a and a trooper and a warrior and all those things. And I, I just want to hear all about you and, you know, how how you came to write this amazing book. And, you know, and from, also from how you came to get a time. word in edgeways when Dee was talking. <laughs> that, that's probably your greatest so, feat, I would think. You know what? You know what, Eliza? It's because I'm so excited that you're here. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you. So I'll shut up now. <laughs> well, I am really thrilled to be invited onto your show. I can't tell you, you know, I've never done really anything like this before. So life keeps on offering us different challenges. And I suppose I've always been on a spiritual journey looking for the truth of myself, you know, because we're so much more than who we think we are, not just little, our little ego selves, but our true self, which is vast, vast consciousness that radiates actually from, from our hearts. And um, so when I found out, and it was only two years ago, when I was, believe it or not, 73. What? <laughs> What? You look incredible. Wow. <laughs> you look amazing. Hang on. I've just put my glasses on. <laughs> She's put on her glasses. <laughs> come here. Come closer. Come closer. No, you you're not 17. No. Sorry. That's no. a lie. That's a lot. It's the first time. You mean you got it the wrong way around? Yeah. Well, let that be an encouragement for so many people who fear aging, because actually, once you embrace it, it's the most beautiful process where we, you know, we were the wisdom teachers. The older generation were the wisdom teachers in all those different cultures. Anyway, back to the story. To find out when I was seventy-three that. The person I thought my father was, was not. And my presumed father was someone, he was head of the Cambridge University Press, um, a hugely intelligent man, gentle, tall, which I'm not, by the way, <laughs> very, very good looking, adored by everybody. And then through the story that I tell in the book, there's a question mark about whether I am truly his daughter. And none of my family wanted to know, know about it. They thought, how dare you question our mother's virtuosity? She, <laughs> was, uh, she was a lady in, in the House of Lords. 25 years of her life she spent devoted to, you know, worthy causes. 
how can you stain her reputation? She's so virtuous, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, my niece, bless her, said, if you and I do a DNA test, we can find out whether you are a David, that's the family name, my presumed father, or um, whether somebody else is your father. And I did a DNA test. I've never been good at maths. <laughs> I thought I had sufficient you know, DNA in common with her to be a David, but no, it turned out that I wasn't. So she sent me a lovely email and she said, I'm terribly sorry to tell you, but you are not Dick David's daughter. And that just shocked me. Absolutely. What was the, what was the first reason that you, you doubted mm -hmm. that your believed father wasn't your father? Because my, it was always thought that my sister could be Bob Boothby's daughter. Um, because we suspected that my mother had had an affair with him during the war and it would all fit in with the time of her birth and it was quite widely talked about in Cambridge circles wow. while we were growing up so and I and then this book The Peer and the Gangster came out three years ago by Dan Smith mm -hmm. which brought to the fore all the gossip about Bob Boothby's brief friendship with the craze mm -hmm. and the huge government cover-up that went on and so that rate, and my sister bought the book and I thought, why is she buying everything that's written about Bob Boothby? And she and I talked about having DNA tests in the past, but always when it came to it, no, I don't want to know. You know, I prefer to believe who my father is than know the truth. And it was her eldest son who came to stay with me and said, we need to know the truth before you two die. And so are both of you Bob's children? Exactly, two of uh them. -huh. And that's why it was, you know, when I, well, I didn't believe I would be a second, you know, second mistake, you know, if it was. One loved child is okay, but <laughs> two, not. So did your, did your um, you know, stepdad, did he think he was the natural, your natural father? He always knew, that as I've gone on on this journey, meeting all my new relations, they all knew that Teresa and I were Bob Boothby's children. It seemed the secret was kept only within our family for the sake of image, respectability, and all of that. You knew Bob Boothby? I knew Bob Boothby because he was my sister's godfather. He was a close family <laughs> friend. Well, actually, a very close family <laughs> 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 And he often came to stay with us in Cambridge and he always brought us gifts and he was just so generous and fun loving and kind hearted. You know, and I knew because my mother had a temper, which she took out on me as the youngest. And in retrospect, I feel as though that could have been now in the uncovering of this story, because maybe I was not mistaken. <laughs> Maybe I was supposed to be Dick David's daughter who just returned from the war. And, you know, then... Did the they have any children? Did, did David have any uh, natural yeah, children? Two, yeah, two, two brothers. I've got two elder brothers. Right. And they conceived before the war. So then my father went off and, you know, the whole journey for me now is about understanding, compassion, not judgment, because none of us actually know what went on in those days. You know, freedom, sexual freedom was all tied up with post Bloomsbury group, you know, all this generation of writers, actors looking for freedom. And then that pushed on to the 60s, you know, flower power, freedom and free love and all of that. Yeah. Um, so I think their sexuality, it was just a, the way they expressed themselves. And did your, did your mother, as your mother, did your mother pass before you found out? So yeah. did she know you, oh, she, so she never knew that you found out? But I asked her in her nineties, I said to her, not about myself, but I, I was the, I developed a very close relationship with her and I just moved on to my third marriage. <laughs> <laughs> but they were long marriages for my third marriage and so you know it was a time to talk about relationships and I just said I just was sitting with her in her Cambridge home and we just had lunch and a glass of wine and I just said now tell me mum could Teresa be Bob Boothby's daughter and at first I thought oh my god she's gonna have a heart attack because her breathing went very like like that and I thought please please <laughs> don't collapse on me but then she said well she couldn't be 
And that would have been her chance to say that I was too, but she just went on to say, well, actually the boys are most like the David family, you know, meaning her sons. And so that was her opportunity, mm -hmm. but she didn't take it and chose to take her mm -hmm. secret to the grave. What did that make you feel like? Did you feel betrayed in any way because she'd done that? There were all sorts of feelings that went through me when I first found out, you know, which was mm -hmm. two years ago. And thank God I've had, because of my spiritual journey, my, you know, I've taught meditation mm -hmm. for 50 years. I had the tools to allow me to process it all. So, you know, it was Oh, so it, in fact, all it helped me do is find more compassion in my heart for all those people that were involved and also for all those people who discover that their father is not the person they believed him to be and then have to go on this journey. Well, who is he? And of course, if he was the milkman, they're never going to find out. But because Bob Boothby is, you know, a huge heritage in it, his himself, you know, and all his family go back. I mean, I think the Fomoy family is related to Princess Diana. There's a lot, a huge ancestral line there. So, um, you yeah, must have lots of half brothers and sisters then. Well, he, Bob Boothby was an only child, but lots of cousins. And I'm meeting all these cousins. I was in Scotland last week to do a launch there because Bob represented the constituency of Aberdeenshire for more than 40 years. And he is hugely loved there. I did a, um, a half hour photo presentation and all the farmers and friends came who knew him and they wouldn't hear a word said against him. They adored him. So um, anyway, and there I met another cousin. <laughs> And they're so pleased to welcome me into the family because they all knew. They said, we thought you were denying it. Oh, If he had an affair and two children with your mother, chances are that he's done that elsewhere. He has. <laughs> he had a 30 year long affair with Dorothy McMillan, which, you know, McMillan became prime minister. It went on even during that time. But what's so incredible, if you think of nowadays, the press, you know, the information it gathers on the scandal, it, how yeah. they just let that go? They never exposed it. Everybody knew about it and all the higher echelons of it's, society. It's probably because he was friends with the craze. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> terrified. Yeah, you met him, didn't you? Eliza, you met him. It's one more time. likely I, he did. Yeah, he was also friends with the with the Queen Mother, actually. <gasps> oh no, he had a hugely respected circle of friends of writers, composers, artists, and was adored himself and did so much for children. Brought in free school milk for children after the war, and you know, encouraged and visited the East End a lot during the war. I mean, so he he was a he was such a generous, kind-hearted person. But the relationship with your mother must have gone on for quite a long time. Twelve years, I reckon. Twelve years? Wow. It's quite a life, isn't it? God, he had some stamina. But how lovely <laughs> to have that passion for 12 years. I mean, you don't get it when you get married, do you, really? No. no. Oh, wait for yourself. <laughs> Only for about a year. No. <laughs> oh, well, you, you, you're, Lindy, you've got, you, you know, you've always had that, that passion ignited but not not many people do within marriage I don't think for no I think it, you know well I've been married three times but my marriages have not been short I mean I was 11 years married to an actor who you know was very handsome good looking got the lead part in a Fellini film in the late 60s so that also brought challenges but that marriage lasted for 11 years and acquainted me very much with the film and theatre world although I did actually go to drama school central school of speech and drama to study stage management ah. <laughs> believe it or not <laughs> I, I loved that I loved it when you described in the book that you know you and he went to Pidlockbury to do rep and you had no, no money and, and you arrived at this sort of terrible sort of place tell us about that that was so funny well who is who was he who is he Martin Potter who, oh, I remember him. I remember what he looked like. I re why would I remember him? Very handsome. Incredibly good looking. Yeah. And I couldn't believe at drama school he took an interest in this 
like um, first year stage management student who was insecure, <laughs> you know, I never saw myself as socially adept or anything. But anyway, he took a shine to me. And it was a really good marriage in so many ways. But inevitably, he was young, he was good looking, there were affairs, I felt rejected. It was just very challenging for a young, very young woman. I married at 18 and then had this little child. But, you know, so I just felt alone. I'd abandoned my career. I'd lost all my friends. But anyway, I just want to go back because I know I'm sure everybody's longing to know about Bob's friendship with the craze. Can I just oh, yeah, yes. allude to that? You mentioned well, it. The thing is, I don't think we've got enough time to talk about everything. I'd love you to come. Could you come back soon? They've got to just buy the book, so it covers all the story of the craze. It covers all the stories, yes. Can you tell us just very briefly how you you met him, didn't you, Ronnie oh. Craig? I, I did meet him. I did meet him at Bob's flat. And it was just a very brief friendship he had with them, him at a time when actually his relationship, Dorothy McMillan was dying, you know, so that friendship had gone. He'd sunk into depression. But so many rich and famous people were going to Esmeralda Spa in the East End because it was the first gambling casino and Bob loved gambling. So that was how the friendship, but there was not an abuse of young people there was no abuse but Bob was homosexual for bisexual for some bits of his life oh, wow and so you know an interesting well, character I've got as a father yes <laughs> interesting. I think, I think, yes I think I mean I know this is another conversation but I think that a lot of um people those sort of people were, were it was kind of like anything went anything goes really uh for for quite a long time when sexual liberation came in I think and, and people don't know, people didn't know who they are. And then, you've got, of course, now you've got the whole thing that worries me the most, which is the whole trans debate, which worries me so much, uh, you know, because poor, you know, I don't think people are allowed to express who they are anymore, their sexuality without being labelled. Yeah, I would totally agree. I would totally agree. And actually, Bob was behind the reform to make homosexuality legal interesting enough he was right behind that he was the one who of course it was illegal at the time of course my goodness yes. well, although, he's, although he's surrounded with a lot of scandal he sounds like an absolutely fabulous man yes he, <laughs> he was. was he really was and you know if only I'd known I mean in Scotland I felt so proud to be representing him as his daughter and everybody... but at least you got to know him at least he was a family friend and you did spend yeah. time with him. that's lovely he exactly. and he he obviously knew that you were his daughter. He did. Yeah. He did. But he just couldn't express that. No. Wow! Well, what an amazing story. <laughs> it, it's and just fantastic. Just, show us the book again. Like show us the book. The book is available. The book is available on Amazon and you know through all good bookshops, if not there on order. Do you want um, to give us a flash of it? Have you got yeah. it with you? Come on, Dee. I've got it. Got it. Oh, Dee's got, got it. it. He's got it. There you are. It called Search for the Truth. In Search, Search, Search of the Truth. Truth. In Search of Truth. And of Truth. it is a page turner. Everybody it, says that once you've started it's, reading it. It's yeah. unbelievable. Really fabulous. And um, one thing just before you go, Eliza, I must ask you. You're you're the, the man who brought you up. Yeah. Was he lovely to you? Did you adore him? Very remote, very distant. Oh. Speaks you had, volumes, you, doesn't it? Speaks yes. volumes. Never. Yeah. You, had never. It, you had it tough, didn't you? Because I, it I was tough. really, really moved when you said that you offered. You had it was either your sister or yourself going to boarding school, and you knew that she wouldn't want to go. So you offered, and yeah. didn't realise it was going to be immediate. No, absolutely, that was it. No, I felt pushed out all during my childhood, but mm. then maybe that's what started my spiritual search. I was going to say, I but I really believe that. I think that, that, that made you the person you I think you, you know, today. don't you? You know where you belong. You know that something's not right inside. Yeah, you? absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. the feeling and who, of rejection you that you're unmistakable. Feeling rejected is the worst, worst thing for all oh, for a child. As and well. who knew oh. that your spiritual journey would take you into the Wonder Bird's nest? <laughs> I <didn't laughs> dreamed of being here. <laughs> I'm so glad to have met you. I oh, really, yeah. I, 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 are you in London? Do you come to London? 
Well, I do sometimes. And I've now got lots of invitation from cousins. Well, we, we aren't your cousins. We are your Wonderbird friends. But please we come are. and let's all have dinner together because I'd love to talk to you for hours. So that Absolutely. would be really lovely. It really would. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. We'll see you soon. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. 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 Bless you. Bye. Thank you. All. Thank Bye. you. Okay. See you soon. Bye. Wow. Well, I remember oh, Martin really. Potter. I remember Martin Potter. I would have a face to the name, but no, I remember I remember him because he was so handsome. And I think I remember him having, I know this sounds strange, it was a Zeffirelli film where I think they dyed his hair blonde and he had really dark eyebrows. Um, I don't know, we'll have to have a look at his picture, we'll have to Google him, but I, yeah, I do him. seem to remember him because it's somewhere in the back of my head, somewhere. Well, but pop a picture up for us all. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, I'll have a, that's a good I'll idea. Have a look. But Linda, thank you for coming back to being a wonder bird. Oh, goodness I, me. I wouldn't have missed that story for the world. That was just, oh. that was incredible. Wasn't it? And also, we are delighted because we know we're getting our own channel in September. I know, get you, eh? I know. Get and so we're going to carry on doing all the beauty treatments and stuff. And and you're going to carry on doing them with us as well, aren't you? I'm yeah. Yes, I'd love yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Natalie That's... has been going to be beautified, haven't you, Nat? And now you're going to get some more treatments, Linda, and these having oh. some treatments. My God, we're going to be so young, so we're going to be the Wonder Bird. No, but it's so, it, there's so much new stuff out there to talk about, isn't there? There's oh, new there is, things all the time. Um, yeah. and it's great that you're just letting people know what's available. Yeah, I was giving the skin door uh, moisturizer the other day, and Debbie, it's she said, "Oh, you're going to love this." It's so wonderful. Yeah, skin door. It's a moisturizer. You put it on. It's day and night. It's just gorgeous. And well, I've, I've been using, and I've had great comments lately about the, the plumpness. I've been taking um, protocol um, collagen sachets. Um, and they're the they're just like a little tube of like blackberry. You just tear it off and just is, is that it. what we've got? We, I mean, we we've had got some we've got hollow, the same sort of thing. But oh right, yeah, well. it's hollow in tubes, but it's brilliant. Yeah, really yes. makes a difference. It's been taking it about three months now. It's really made a difference to my skin and it my does. Dog. You know how when you walk down the stairs in the morning and your knees are clicking and your feet are clicking? It's gone. Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Well, you're subhuman, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, she's actually an alien. Yes. <laughs> because, Linda, you must remember, I have never done any exercise. So my body's never worn out because I've never done anything. Well, no, I don't That's really do that much. You do weights, don't you? No, oh, and I've got muscles, but don't do weights. Oh, God, mm -hmm. how do you do that without weights? I think it's metabolic. My dad was like a muscle man, little Italian muscle man. So I've got his muscles. <laughs> oh. At least you don't have his yeah, boots. Yeah. Anyway, um, girls, do you think honey, resistance train does does not going to the gym uh, count as resistance training? Very good, Natalie. Yes, Actually, we're in resistance. Yes, training. I think it does. Yeah, I it's think excellent, excellent, yes. Natalie. And I shall, I shall leave on this, uh, my, my joke that I've told 5,000 times, which is I am so unfamiliar with the gym that I call it James. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, she, she said it a million times and I still don't know what she means. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> Thank Jim, you, Linda. James. We'll see you soon. Oh, I love you, bye. Thanks again. Bye. bye. bye.